Hey guys, welcome to the channel and welcome back to another video, another live. I appreciate you guys being here. Let me know, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me guys and just let me know that you are able to get my audio through. Just want to be sure we're set on that guys before we get going and having a conversation today. And this conversation is, in my opinion, it's kind of, it's pretty important, right? This is something that I like to talk about because we sort of get a, a sort of a misnomer about hard work. And I want to have the conversation, guys, and really just talk to you about the fact that it takes a whole lot more than hard work. We'll talk about it, guys. Let me know what city you're coming from. Thanks for the thumbs up. X Music, I'll shout you out, guys. I like to go through the chat. And as you come in, let me know where you're coming from. Where are you at, guys? Let me know your city and state. I'm a big geography map person, so I like to know where people are located throughout the world, continents, countries, you name it. Uh, hey, Nigel, good to have you here. Uh, Roberta's in the house. Nigel's from Canada. Good to have you. Curtis Ball is here. Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right. Tornado Alley down there. Okay, Sunset on the Ocean. Missed most of the last live. Glad to have you here, Sunset on the Ocean. Hello to you as well. Atlanta's here. Outside of Philadelphia, Philly is in the house. Good to have you here. ATL Hucklebuck, good to have you again. Tennessee is here. Patterson, New Jersey is in the house. Okay, great. Missouri, great. What's up? How you doing? Hey, Jason, how you doing? Good to have you as well. Uh, thank you for stopping in, guys. Thank you for being here. And look at me. I got those overactive tear ducts working already, guys. So you guys help me out with that because my eyes get watery. I think it might be the spring season. Hey, Delaware is here. Good to have you here. Tracy from New York. Toledo, Ohio is here. Good to have you here. Checking in from Mexico. Sam, good to have you here as well. Let's talk about it, guys. Nigeria, David, good to have you here. Asian guy here. Good to have you. How to get financially ahead of 99% of people in the world. OK, this is what the conversation is about today. As you can come in, guys, hit the like button for me. That's a little thing with a thumbs up right there. Right. Tap that thing for me and, uh, you know, share the link if you want. That'll work as well. But uh, let's just have this conversation. And if you put a cue in the uh, in the uh, what do you call that thing? The chat. I'll try to answer your question, too. OK, um, just put a cue there so I can easily identify it and don't pass it up. Dan is from London. Good to have you. Terry is here from Virginia. We got some folks all around the world. San Antonio's in the house. Louder Hill, not Louder Hill, Louder Hill, Florida is here. Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Grayman's from the Philly suburbs. Benjamin's in Jackson, Mississippi, which I've been to Jackson to do a little research there at the uh, State Archives of Mississippi. Uh, Mia from Atlanta. Good to have you. Belton, Missouri is in the house. Good to have you as well. Uh, and thanks for hitting the slide, this thumbs up, CS. But guys, when we talk about getting financially ahead of 99% of the people in, of the world, right? First of all, if, if you're in America and you're you're not poor in America and you have a source of income, you're, you're doing pretty well, right? Let's just be honest about that, right? If you look at the whole world, you're doing pretty well. Now, you might not be doing well in the middle of San Francisco or you might not be doing well in the middle of Miami or uh, Boston or Sam or, or uh, Seattle, you know, but in terms of the whole world, you're doing pretty good. It now, for those of you that feel like you're just mediocre in a big city where things are expensive, you may want to consider going to a place that's less expensive. Just something to think about. I know that we think of migration and all those things uh, as something of the past, but guess what? People have been moving all over the world for a better life. Uh, for thousands of years, right? Thousands of years, people have migrated. So maybe if, if, if that's your if that's your situation, perhaps you need to be in another another city. Perhaps you need to even be in another country. All right. So, uh, but but let's let's dig into it, guys. We got LA in the house. Good to have you, uh, Maurizio. Good to have you. Liked and shared. Thanks, Magris. I appreciate it. Um, and St. Louis, Missouri, is in the house, right? St. Louis, East St. Louis, Little Brooklyn, Illinois, is it? All right, so we got somebody from St. Louis. Good to have you, Arvon. Let's see here. So, I mean, let's talk about hard work for a second. Let's just have this conversation and break it open with hard work. Do you often, here's, here's a question for you guys. Do you often work harder and wonder to yourself, why am I not building wealth? 
because I'm working hard, right? They tell us, right? We learn. Got to work hard. Working hard is important, man. You got to work hard. Are you working hard or you're not working hard, right? That seems to be the thing, the mantra that a lot of us grow up with is hard work. Got to work hard. Now, listen, pre- I'm going to preface this whole thing with this. I'm okay with working hard. Nothing wrong with working hard, right? I'm good with that. But here's what I need to tell you guys, and, and this will help you, help some of you think through this thing a little bit. If building wealth was was simply about just working hard, a lot of people, most people in the world would probably be wealthy because a lot of people in the world work hard, right? It's not just about working hard. It's not, it's, that's not enough, right? We sort of think sometimes that's enough sometimes, but it's not, guys. You, you can't just work hard. I mean, Think about it. A lot of people work hard. Real, so I know people that work 60, 70 hours a week and they still live in paycheck to paycheck. Right. So when you look at and, and, and hopefully, guys, we have a pretty good connection here, by the way. We had a connection issue last time, but hopefully we'll be fine. I think we'll be OK. Um, but if I do start, what do you call it? Uh, dialing back, just listen to my voice. <laughs> All right. Because I think my voice will stay strong. But I'm looking at my bars over here. And uh, it doesn't like I have a whole lot of bars, a good strong signal, but we'll see what happens. It'll come back ultimately. Uh, it's not a good sense. But if you're working 60, 70 hours a week, a lot of people are grinding. A lot of people are knee deep in the hustle culture. But if you want to be different, if you want to get ahead of most people in the world, 99% of most people in the world, You cannot just be a person that says, I'm going to work harder than everybody else, right? If you want to be in a different place with your personal finances, you have to start thinking hard, okay? You have to start thinking harder than everybody else. That's different, right? And I know you say, that's easy. It's not as easy as you think, okay? You got to be a person that understands that this right here It's what's going to take you further than most people, not your sweat, not your, you know, blood, sweat, tears, none of that, not your tears, right? Not your passion. You know, that's not what's going to take you. This is right here. This is going to take you further than 99% of the people in the world. Not the fact that you work overtime. Congratulations. You work overtime. A lot of people work overtime. Congratulations. You put in 75 hours last week. Congratulations, right? A lot of people put in 75 hours last week, right? But did you put in 75 hours doing something that's going to make you $1,000 in a week? Or did you put in 75 hours doing something that's going to make you $10,000 in a week? It's a difference. And the difference is not your blood, sweat, and tears. The difference is this right here. You have to be a person that starts to think hard. We live in, a, in America. I'm only speaking for America. In a lot of ways in America, we live in a very mindless culture that doesn't require you to think hard, doesn't require you to strategize, think about your future, put a plan together. We live in a society where entertainment rules, and, if you, and you can have a conversation with most people if you understand what's going on, the latest news that happened in the world in America, whether it was some entertainment news or whether it was some, uh, some type of, um, sporting news, right. It's all, not all, but it's a lot of it is about entertainment in America. And I'm saying that if you want to be different than 99% of the people of the world, you have to start to think differently about future, about money, about personal finances, about career, about where you're going about 10 years from now, not just about the concert, not just about what's right around the corner, right? If you don't have the money right now in, in terms of personal finance, if you don't have the money you want or think you should have, it's not because you're not working hard. You're probably working harder than most people you're, or just as hard or not, not, not harder than most people. It's not about that, okay? It's not about working hard. It's about thinking, planning harder, right? This is where you change your personal finances here. 
you, here, you don't change your personal finances by working additional hours on the job. That helps. Nothing wrong with that. I'm okay with hard work. I'm not bashing hard work. I'm not against hard work at all, right? Hard work is good, but it takes more than hard work. You are where you are with your money, not because of how hard you work or didn't work. You are where you are with money because of how you think about money, how you think about your future, what you thought about your career, what you thought about your future, what you thought about your vision, what you thought about 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Remember when you came out of high school at 18, 19 years old and your parents said, you got, you know, maybe you should go to college. And you said, no, I don't want to go to college. I want to hang out with the fellas and I'm going to hang out or I want to hang out with the girls. I don't want to do, I want to chill, relax. I've worked hard all my life. I don't want to, you're 18, 19 years old. And instead of going to college to be that accountant where you today could be making $150,000 a year, you decided not to go to college and go ahead and take that job at somewhere else at the restaurant somewhere, being a waiter or waitress. And now 20 years later, you're still struggling. Right. Because it's not about the working hard. Listen, you work hard as a waiter or waitress or whatever you're doing out there. You work hard at it, but you're not making the money you want to make because you're not thinking the right way. Right. The top 10% of Americans in America own 70% of all the wealth, 76% of all the wealth in them in America. So the majority of the wealth in America is tied up in, in a few people. And those few 10, top 10% 10 of Americans, they're not working harder than everybody else. I guarantee you, they're not putting in the extra hours like you think, right? The people that are putting in the extra hours are the people that don't own much. The people that own most of America, they're not working harder than you. They're just thinking harder than you. So if you want to get to the next level financially, you got to begin to change the thinking. How do I, let's talk about how to do that. I don't want to just say it and just not give you any uh, you know, specific things you can do. Look, you don't buy into the myth that hard work builds wealth only that's the great myth right that you just gotta you just gotta work whole, a whole lot harder and you have more no no it's not it let me just see if we got up oh, philadelphia 76ers hello from memphis good to have you here mildred uh gotta get your money to work for you no doubt one of the things you got to think about is you got to think about i'll just jump into it one of the things you got to think about is you have to think about how to have your money working for you. That's a part of working, a, a thinking, right? Strategizing ways to put your money to go to work for you. Strategizing ways to say, you know what? I got this thing going down in value called money because of inflation is going down in value. How can I take and flip this into something going up in value? That's thinking smart, right? So that in five years, you have an asset that's working for you as opposed to having things that's working against you, right? You don't work hard to get, you, you don't put in the work to get things. You put in the work to get assets. You put in the work to get things that will work for you, to turn the money. You don't keep the money under your mattress because then the money is working against you. You take the money and you invest it in something that can go to work for you, right? I don't care if it's CDs, bonds, Stock, the stock market, you know, whatever it could be, real estate assets that don't work against you. If you could just figure out that one thing, how to have more assets that don't work against you, you're going to be ahead of mo a lot of people, right? Just that one thing alone. How do I take my money and flip it into assets that's going up in value? Just that one concept in your brain will get you there. We'll get, we'll get you ahead, ahead of a lot of people. Right. But another thing, let me jump into another thing is this. You got to get some new information. And I knew, I know you're watching this video, right? That's good new information. But you got to flood your brain with new information on a regular daily basis. New learning. I don't care if it's books, audio books, new podcast, new YouTube channels, new ways of spending your time absorbing new information about what you should be doing with your money listening to these new ideas and new ways of thinking. Remember, money is a result. It's a result of how you think, 
because how you think it turns into behavior and behavior turns into money. If you have no money, it goes back to how you think. Because your thoughts control your behavior. Your behavior controls your money. But it starts with your thinking, right? But you got to get the new information. This is about training your brain to be a harder thinker. Now, listen, in America, when we talk about new information and get new stuff, we are taught to just be doers. We are taught to, we are taught what to think from day from our year five when we hit kindergarten or preschool, whatever, whenever you start school, you are taught what to think. You're not taught how to think. So for a lot of us, we have to retrain the way we look at the world and we need to understand the idea and the notion of bringing in a lot of different things. This is why I tell you on this channel, don't just listen to me. Please. I'm going to give you some good information from my perspective, but your job is to listen to all different types of people in your YouTube feed. If you watch a lot of YouTube, you ought to have a good 5, 10, 15 financial people that you listen to. And then here's what you do. You don't do exactly what I tell you to do. Please don't. I'm, I'm on here telling you, don't do exactly what I tell you to do. You need to go ahead and form your own personal philosophy about money based on all the information that you hear from other people. So you can take all the new name to guru from Kiyosaki to Susie Orman to Dave Ramsey to you name it, Tony Robbins, whatever, smart money, bro, whoever. You take all of that information, filter it through your situation, your life, your history, your personal finances, and then you come out with your own personal philosophy about money. That's what you do. That's thinking for yourself. But a lot of times what happens is this. We're so accustomed to other people telling us what to think is that we watch Dave Ramsey and we do every single thing Dave Ramsey says like a robot because that's how we're taught. We're conditioned to do what we're told to do, not think for ourselves. You have to get to a point with your money when you're thinking for you. Right? Very, very important. Self-improvement, training your brain to think harder, reprogramming your mind, not just what to think, but analyzing the information you get. See how it fits into your own personal financial situation. And then what can you implement? What can you not implement? What can you pull from this money person and pull from that money person and make it work in your situation? But here's the kicker. Don't be pulling something from other people just to, just to reiterate your own personal bad decisions with money, right? If you know that you're not a person that can handle credit cards and you had a couple of our bankruptcy here and there, don't listen to the fast money people who are just going to, uh, um, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Just want to back what your, your, your poor money decisions, right? The key is find what works that helps you win with money, right? That's thinking dip deeper than just listening to Robert Kiyosaki and doing what everything Robert Kiyosaki tells you to do uh, line by line. I'm not saying that's horrible, but I'm saying the better route for you and your personal situation is to say, how does this fit in with me? OK, now he said that and she said that. How does that fit in with me and how can I use that and how can I come up with my own personal philosophy? Right. Very important, guys. That means you got to, when you're taking in new information and you're reading different books and all this stuff, you got to start to say, okay, let me shut out the noise a little bit, right? Let me cut off of the, uh, the, the, the guru websites, right? And you may be saying, well, smart money, bro, you're a guru. No, I'm not really a guru. I'm just a regular old dude, <laughs> right? I'm, I don't consider myself a guru. I'm just a regular person that uses a lot of common sense when it comes to money. And I've built up some money and I help other people do it. I don't claim guru status. I don't know everything. Right. But you've got to start to say, OK, what works for me? What doesn't work for me? If it doesn't work for me, let me shut out the noise. Let me develop my own thoughts about consuming, my own thoughts about spending money, my own thoughts about my income expenses, my own um, worksheet for my net worth statement, my own worksheet. Google spreadsheet for my um, my budget. This is why I tell people, don't use a budget template. Please, 
Don't use a budget template. I don't have a budget template. And if you use one now, that's cool. Keep using it. Better to use something than not budget at all. But if you've never budgeted before and you want to get started budget, create your own template on a spreadsheet. Because it's yours. You got and when you're trying to build wealth and get 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 financially ahead of 99% of the people in the world, you've got to start creating some things, creating some processes, creating some spreadsheets, creating some things for you that you that are going to work in your life, creating a, a set of notebooks where you put all of your stuff in. You got to start being a person that's a builder, a creator of your own processes. And this is difficult for a lot of people because we're taught to sit and wait and think. I'm sorry, sit and wait and not think, but do what we're told to do. We spend 12 or 13 or 14 or 17 years of our life if we go to college sitting in a classroom waiting on somebody to tell us what to do, tell us what to think, tell us what to do next, tell us where in the book to read, tell us what worksheet to do, tell us what, what, pro what problem is coming up next, tell us what the assignment is, tell us what the homework is, tell us, then we turn on the TV and turn on CNN and MSNBC and Fox, and they tell us what to think about this political situation, tell us what to think about the other political situation. Listen, we are just taught everything, and we're not used to being thinkers, and you have to think your way out of poverty. That's how you can get ahead of 99% of the people in the world. It's not about just working hard. That's a misnomer. Because 99% of the time when you go to work hard, who are you working for? Somebody else. To keep the machine running, you have to believe that hard work is going to get you out of poverty. But guess what? Hard work doesn't get you out of poverty. It helps. It's not bad, but it doesn't get you out of poverty. Hard thinking is what gets you out of poverty. Right? Another thing you can do, as I said, I alluded to it, but you got to be a creator, a developer, and builder. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. You have to create, develop, and build plans. You have to strategize your way out of poverty. If you want to get ahead of 99% of the people in the world financially, you have to be a person that is accustomed to building strategies, to developing plans, to creating blueprints, right? You got to be in the habit of writing things down, recording things, taking notes, right? I always crack up because I'm usually when I go to if I go to a conference or something, I'm 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 taking notes. Right. I'm taking notes because I don't rely on my brain to keep everything in the brain. I forget things. So if you want to, you know, when you go to when you go places and you want to listen intently, bring a notepad, bring something to take notes in or take notes on your phone, whatever it may be. Get some pens and paper. Right. Get some notebooks, some whiteboards, some poster board, some post-it notes. Go to Walmart around the corner. I think everybody in America got a Walmart within 10 miles or five miles. Run to Walmart, get what you need and start being a writer that writes things down, develops things, builds things. Right. That's what's going to take you to a, a new level. A new level. Let me jump back in, guys. I'm saying I get on those tangents, right? Today we can discuss. Can we discuss NFTs? No, non fungible tokens. I'm not going to discuss non fungible tokens. Um, what impact will all the conflicts have on stocks and shares? And I'm a little behind, way behind on the chat, but I want to get to a few of them. And I got more to tell you guys. I got more to tell you. Hang in there with me. But what impact will these conflicts have on stocks and shares? I don't know. That's a question I just don't know. If I could know that, phew, We'd all, I, I'd tell you guys what to go buy and we'd be rich in about six months, right? But I don't know what the impact of all these conflicts are going to have, right? But wherever there's conflict, there's an opportunity to make money. Always understand that if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail, said Chief. Uh, let's see here, correct? Boom, boom, boom. And I'm just looking for the cues right now, guys, uh, if there's any questions. Let's see here. Dave is good motivation for getting, yeah, Dave, Dave Ramsey is great motivation for getting debt free. Uh, but yeah, his 8% withdrawal rate is a little bit ridiculous and it's not mathematically correct. Um, more like four or 5% is better. Uh, all the studies say that. Uh, and what we're talking about is a 4%. When you build up a million dollars and you're 60 years old, you should be withdrawing four to 5% of that money a year and it will last you for 30 years, not 8%. You, you're, you may run out of money if you try to withdraw 8%. 
So the 4% withdrawal rate or 5% is much better uh, when you get in retirement. Salute back to you, Jay Samuels. Good to have you here. Uh, Art of War is in here. Great name, Sun Tzu from Ohio State. Good to Now, Sun Tzu is not from Ohio State, but Art of War in the chat is from Ohio State, right? Uh, let's see here. Good points. That was 100%. That was 100% think your way out. Yes, as, absolutely. Absolutely. Being smart with money can get you out of poverty, Davion said. Yep, you're right. Hey, how you doing, Tab from Nebraska? Uh, Jason, we've been trained to think that's a powerful word of insight. So true. Yes, absolutely, Jason. We and, and the problem with a lot of people is we 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 think a certain way and we just we we don't understand that the real the real focus is a spiritual focus and an intellectual focus. A spiritual focus and an intellectual focus. And if you're focused on those two things, poverty, poverty can't stand a chance with you, right? Poverty can't stand a chance with you. But what a lot of people are focused on is they're focused on blood, sweat, tears. They're focused on their emotions. They're focused on working hard. They're focused on the job, getting more hours, getting more overtime, moving up at the job, getting the bonus. They're focused on those things and they haven't really focused on what matters most, right? Right. So it's about thinking. Another thing is this, as I, as I was talking about, guys, you got to make sure you're a creator and a builder. I talk to people who come to me and ask me questions and they say, um, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to wait on something, something, something to happen. And I'm saying I, I'll, give you, I'll give you a good, a really good example. Uh, somebody will come to me and say, you know what? I just got in this um, program where I have twenty thousand dollars of student loan debt. And if I wait around, if for t if I pay, if I don't miss a payment for ten years, I'm going to be able to get rid of all of my my, my student loan debt. And I have twenty thousand dollars of student loan debt. And I'm saying to myself, hold up, that that's a problem. Because if you have twenty thousand dollars of student loan debt, and you're waiting ten years for the government or somebody to pay it off for you or to for, or student loan forgiveness, why? Why are you waiting around, waiting on somebody else to dictate to you when they may or may not help you out with something that you did? You got the loan. Go ahead and pay the loan off. Why are you waiting for somebody to set the chains, the bondage of indentured servitude called student loans? Why are you waiting for somebody to come around with the key when you actually have the key that's sitting uh, somewhere on your person. And if you understand and strategize and think your way out of the situation, you can take the key to unlock the bondage to get the student loan debts away from you in a year and a half, as opposed to waiting on somebody else for 10 years that may not happen. Legislation may change. The next Congress or president, whoever comes in, they might switch that whole thing around and change it and it not be there when you want it to be there in 10 years, why are you waiting for somebody else to take charge over your personal financial life? Don't wait. Don't be a person that's uh, uh, an inactive person that's reactionary. Oh, well, if I just do this, you know, they're going to go ahead and forget about them. If you have an opportunity to pay your $20,000 student loan off in a year, pay it off in a year, pay it off in two years, whatever it takes. Don't wait around for, but we're, we, a lot of people will just wait and wait and wait and maybe the government and wait and wait. And if the government, listen, on this channel, we don't preach that. On this channel, we preach, you get it, preach. We don't preach. I try to preach, but we tell you, hey, get out there and go get it. Be proactive, form your own, uh, develop your own, produce your own, right? This is what I'm saying. You got you can make a plan to get out of twenty thousand dollars of student loan debt in the next three or four years. Do it. Don't sit around and wait on somebody else to come save you. Don't wait on somebody else. Listen, we are born in America. I'm gonna I'm keep it real with you. Real, real, real. If you're not careful, you're gonna fall into this trap. A lot of us have, but it's like we we get ourselves in situations of indentured servitude all of the time with debt. Whether it's a car, think about indentured servitude just mean that you had to pay off a debt or pay off something you owed or, or maybe owed, right? Sharecropping, right? Y you listen, similar, not the same, but similar. The point is that when you get a student loan for $20,000 and I did it, 
right? I did it. Had student loans for ye- I had student loans for 31 years. So if anybody can talk to you about student loan debt, I'm the guy. Had student loan debt for 31 years, literally. So <laughs> I, that's one, that's that's one of my biggest mistakes I've ever made with money. And I talk about my mistakes freely. So you don't have to go through the same mistakes. And if you are going through the same mistakes, let me help you and talk you through it. Right? But You don't want to sit around on somebody else to pay off your debt. Too many people I talk to are sitting and waiting and waiting. And they say, I work 60 hours a week. And I'm saying, okay, but tell me your plan. What is your strategy? Where are your written goals? And where do you have them posted? Let me know the three action steps that uh, that accompany your, your second goal on your list. See, when I ask those type of questions, most people can't answer them. Because most people are just going through life like they were conditioned to go through life, thinking that if they work hard, they'll get ahead, thinking if they work hard, they'll get more money. No, you have to strategize your way out of poverty. You have to create, produce, develop, build your way out of poverty, not just work hard. You have to have a vision. Write down your vision. Write down your strategy. Maybe even create a vision board. Now, I I know this is not Oprah. I get it. But vision boards, they work, right? They really do work. But what is the big picture for your money, right? Goals. What is your goal? Your goals are your roadmap. Nobody likes to talk about goals. I don't think you can find... I don't think you can find 10 videos on YouTube that have over a million views that talk about goals because it ain't glamorous, right? People think I just got to have more income, just got to work more, just got to bring in that. I got to get that $3 raise every hour. No, no, no. Vision, goals, what are you creating? How are you thinking? That's that's the key to get financially ahead of 99% of the people in the world, right? And it's boring to talk about goals, right? Very boring to talk about goals. But they're important. You know? They're very important. Tab, good to have you here. I think I said that earlier. Greenville, South Carolina, good to have you here. Smash the like button. Guys, hit that like button for me. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Hey. Let me just mention this because I don't hardly mention it, but I need to. I offer one-on-one financial mentoring and coaching. The description box has a link. That's all. Mint Mobile, I partner with them. Okay, check them out in the description box below as well. And I don't partner with everybody. So I use Mint Mobile and I like Mint Mobile, right? Have had great success with Mint Mobile. That's why I say if you want to save money on your wireless bills, look at Mint Mobile. Strongly consider. I have a link in my description box if you're interested. It's down there. Okay. Somebody said, I'm looking in the chat right now, guys. I'm going to jump back to what I'm talking about, but let me see what you guys are talking about. What are your thoughts on fixed indexed annuities? I'm not a big annuity guy. Okay. In some situations, annuities are are, are cool, but some situations I want to have more freedom and control, and annuities tend to lock me in like I don't want to be locked in. So, just something to think about it. And, and I do like the fact that if they follow the S&P, that's cool. I'm an S&P 500 guy. I, I believe that the S&P 500 is a good place to park some cash, uh, park money or an investment. Hey, Bernice, Bernice, good to have you. Thank you for being here. Those of us who are lower in the hier- hierarchy, let me read this question. Let me do this. I'm going to do something different. Here it is right here. Those of us who are lower in the hierarchy of, are told what to do at work. How can one come up from that? Great question, Sony. Here's here's one thing you can do. I don't. Here's in my opinion, what you should be doing is you should be working harder on yourself than you work on the job. I know. I said it. Don't beat me up, somebody. Don't beat me up, right? You know, you're supposed to do what you got to do on your job. Nothing wrong with working hard on your job, especially you know if you really enjoy your job, you're making an impact. Put in what you're supposed to put in at your job. I'm not mad at you for that, but you've got to work on self. You got to work on self improvement. You got to work on, okay, what can I do to better myself, to put me in a position that maybe one day I can make be the decision maker as opposed to, as opposed to somebody else's decision taker, 
right? How can I be the decision maker as opposed to somebody else's decision taker? And I always say when it comes to your money, start at home. Start with the controllables. What do you control, Sony? You control you and your decisions and your choices and how you manage your personal finances. Maybe that's a good place to start in terms of getting to the point where, um, you know, you feel a sense of control. You may not have that control at work. That's okay, right? Because that's work. But maybe you want to still feel a sense of control outside of work when you go home. So my question is, are you building anything? What are you creating? What processes do you have in place that you've developed for your life, for your future, for your money, for your household, right? What does that look like in your home? Now, when it comes to the job, if you want to maybe work for a, 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 a position of authority at the job because you're really concerned about at the job, that's cool, too. I'm not mad at you for that. Maybe there's certain way things you can do, uh, behaviors you can do and so forth at the, at the job. But the key is the key is this. When you're on a job, it's still this right here. It's not working 50, 60, 70 hours a week, but maybe it's working smarter. Maybe it's who you know on the job. Maybe it's the network of people you're around the job. Maybe it's the uh, processes and things, the, 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 the SOPs, uh, uh, standard operating procedures that you say, hey, you know what? Maybe there's problem solving on the job. Maybe you ain't got to work 50, 70, 80 hours a week on the job, but maybe you got to start being, being the problem solver on the job. And then maybe you can change your status on the job and you don't have to be right here. They say, oh, there's Sony over there, man. She's the or he's the expert at so and so and so and so. Let's and now you increase your value on your job. And ultimately, you know, somebody may see that you've increased your value because you change the way you do things on your job. You don't uh, hang out with the crowd that's talking about management. You hang out with the crowd that's trying to make management look look better. Right. The point is, is that you got to strategize yourself on the job, in the household, in your money, in your investments. Strategize. Use this right here because the wealthiest people in the world are using this. Right. They're not using their sweat equity. That's my answer. I hope that helped you out, Sony. We have to manifest our thoughts into the physical. I've been working on changing my mindset about money. Very important. Arvon, thank you for sharing that. Uh, hey, Vanessa, good to have you here. Find a make money way to make money while you sleep. Uh, let's see. That point of that student loan point might be from a UK person. My first student loan is due to be written off in August. Wow, good for you. Congratulations, Finland. Uh, yes, hit the like button. Thank you so much for saying that. Uh, developing the discipline to stick to a plan can also be a key to building wealth. Absolutely, Davion. Glad you said that. Excellent point that was put there in the chat. Appreciate that. Maria, good to have you here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, somebody says, if you rely, let me, let me, let me say this. I like this question that Jack Stan said, or this comment said, it, I have to agree to disagree. If you rely on 40 hours a week, you'll never get hit. Side hustles make the American dream come true. Let me say this. I'm going to share this with you guys. Me personally, I haven't worked 40 hours a week in a long, long time. I'm talking 20 some odd hours. I'm sorry, 20 some odd years. It's been a long time since I just worked 40 hours a week. Okay. Full disclosure. So do I work harder than everybody else? Probably. But here, but I don't, I'm not claiming to work harder than anybody in the world. No, that's not what I'm saying. But the thing about the other additional 10 to 15 hours I put in every week, they've all been strategic. They've all been a part of a strategy. They all been a part of goals. They all been a part of trying to build. They all been a part of trying to create. They haven't been an extra five or 10 or 20 hours on the job. My, my 40, my, the plus, my 40 is my job because I still have a job. But my plus is me working on me, is me working on my goals, is me working on my personal finances, is me working on my business, is me working on my rental properties, is me working on my voiceovers, is me working on. So, and I've been doing that for 20 plus years, guys, literally. When I was a school teacher back in the 90s, I say 98, I worked at Circuit City. I was a on the floor salesperson at Circuit City, commission only. That was my part time gig. Then I worked at Dillard's part time. I mean, let me, hey, I got a list. Let me pull this list up. This will be interesting. It'll be funny. I'm going to give you guys a list of all the jobs I've worked. <laughs> I wrote it down. I, here, I got it right here. I just pulled up the document right here. Let me see here. Okay, check this out. All right, have a little fun here. 
I worked at AMC theaters. You guys know what AMC, the movie theater. That was my second job. My first job was at Kentucky Fried Chicken as a cook when I was 15 years old. Because I told him I was 15, right? So I'll be 16. Then I worked at Perkins Restaurant. Then I worked at the dog track. We had a, a Greyhound racetrack here in Kansas City. I worked there. Then I worked at at and I hated that job because it was telemarketing. Then I worked at, uh, let's see. Oh, I worked at Paysetter. Hey, thanks for calling Paysetter Windows and Doors. And this is a Paysetter job. It's a telemarketing job. If you was around in the 90s, early, I'm sorry, late 80s, you if you if you didn't have a telemarketing job, Every all the young people had telemarketing jobs back then, just like all the young people today work at like FedEx or something, right? Back then, all the young people had telemarketing jobs. Then I worked at Jippy Lube. I worked at my community college bookstore. I worked at U-Haul, cleaning out the back of trucks when they came back in and filling up people's propane tanks. They would bring their propane tanks back in, and I would fill up their propane tanks with new propane if they were cookouts or whatever. I worked at UPS as an unloader off the dock, the little brown cars that drive around, pull up back up to the dock, boom, unload. Constant. Woo, that was tough work right there. I worked at Walmart overnight cleaning floors. Learned how to use a buffer. I was cleaning for floors at Walmart. Then I was a school teacher. Told you that. Worked at Circuit City. Told you that. Worked at Dillard's uh, selling shoes. Did that. Um, I worked for an insurance company. Got my series to sell, uh, series 70 or whatever to sell insurance. Then I went to work for Social Security. Then I went to work for, uh, then, then I went to work for GSA. Then I went to work for Eddie Bauer. And I worked at Eddie Bauer part time. Then I went to work for Home Depot part time. Then I went to work for. I've, I've worked a lot of jobs and I ain't even counted the side hustles. <laughs> right. I started owning rental property. I did. I worked on uh, eBay voiceovers, digital products, YouTube channel. You name it. Here's my point. I, I worked a lot of jobs. So I haven't worked 40 hours a week in probably. 26 years, 20. 25, 26 years, maybe since 1998, 99, somewhere around then. I haven't worked just 40 plus hours a week. I haven't done it. But my wealth did not start to take off until I understood the concepts that I'm trying to explain to you on this channel or on this video. The concept that not just working hard, but making sure I work smart. See, that that wasn't what I was doing when I had the, some of those side jobs. I had to learn to work smarter instead of working so much harder. There's people that I say I haven't had just 40 hours a week, worked 40 hours a week in 20 something years. There's people that haven't worked 40 hours a week in 30 years. There's people that work have worked 75 hours a week for the last 10 years. But the question is, what are you doing with those additional hours? Right? Is it just spent putting in more hours at the job and trading your time for an hourly wage? Or is it put in towards working your business, your side gig, your side hustle, and the things that are going to actually propel you, right? Appreciate you clicking the like button. Check the logic. Thanks so much. Uh, let's see. Somebody said, is Mint Mobile services just as good as these? They are. Mint Mobile uses the same large, the largest 5G network in the world. It's the same thing. The difference is Mint Mobile they don't have the stores. They don't have the box stores. You won't find a, like you find a Sprint or a T-Mobile store, or AT&T. They don't have that at Mint Mobile. They don't have people they got to pay, workers. Everything's done online. And it's they have excellent customer service. You can reach somebody anytime. It takes about 10 minutes. You can keep your own phone number too. Really, really solid. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fool with them, wouldn't bring them to you guys. Somebody said uh, 200 watching. We have 200 likes. 200 likes, guys. Smash the like button. Thanks. I appreciate uh, uh, you saying that, Sony. I'm glad I could help you out. Uh, sometimes the best position to be is a non-managing subject matter expert. Check the logic. Yeah, when you're on your job, sometimes you don't want to have the uh, other responsibilities that come with management, but sometimes you do. Right? There's nothing wrong with it if you do. But being a, a non-supervisory person, but still uh, ha having, the, the, having some freedom to be able to go to work, come home, and not think about it after work, because after work, you want to work your five to nine. You know, you work your nine to five and then before work, you work your 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. And or after work, you work your 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Right. Because that's working on you and yourself. Right. Huntsville, Alabama. Appreciate you being here, Randy. Heard some good things about Huntsville. Let's see here. Uh, yeah. Get paid without the management headache, said Check the Logic. I agree with you. Hit that like button. Thank you, Vanessa. Orlando, Florida. Robert, good to have you here. Here as well. Uh, let's see here. 
<laughs> so you said you use your health to help others. How do you help others? Can you expand on that question? Ask that again, Free uh, Finland. I'm not sure what you mean by that question. Uh, let's see here. So we should work harder to work smarter. Oh, I didn't think about it that way, but you could be right. Work harder on working smarter. Absolutely. I would say, yeah, that's probably right. You want to be smarter about it, right? I, that That's really important, guys. Really super important. Let me go back and see something else here. I'm just going to pull this back up. I think I hit all of them earlier when I was talking about them. I want to see if I hit all my jobs. But the other thing, another thing you can do is this, guys, and I'm going to jump back in here. Another thing you can do is <clears throat> to work harder and get ahead of financially, get ahead of financially of 99% of the people on the planet is be sure that you, you're, you, you have some action involved. Okay, so I don't want you just to think that, okay, if I just think harder than everybody else, I'm good. No, it takes a little, it's not just thinking harder, right? Watching uh, videos like this or checking in lives, going to conferences, reading books. Okay, it's not just thinking, okay, to get ahead financially of 99% of the people in the world, right? It's not just, it, it's, it's not working harder, or working, you know, more hours, but it's thinking harder, but then you got to do, okay? You got to implement, Right? Some of the you have to actually do you have to you have to do the behaviors, develop some daily habits, right? You have to produce some results, right? Produce some procedures, right? Produce some rules to live by. Produce some action steps that's going to cause you to be more disciplined around your personal finances. You have to pr produce some some marching orders, so to speak. For yourself and your money, you gotta be you gotta be on an assignment, right? What are the tasks that are going to accompany this different way of thinking, this thinking hard, right? So you have to be in a you have to be at the place where you commit to doing stuff, commit to actually putting this thing in action, not just saying you know what, huh, I'm thinking hard. I think harder than everybody else. I don't I don't work hard, and I don't I work my forty hours, and I think. All day, I just sit and think. No, you have to think and then do. Right? Thinking hard is supposed to lead to actions. It's not supposed to just you being, you thinking hard, right? You're supposed to think about something and then you behave a different way. You do something different. Begin to move. Begin to act in a direction. You shouldn't just have the thoughts, but you should begin to act in the direction of your thoughts. That's why if you if you focus on something, that something begins to change because ultimately it begins to affect your behavior. Right. So I always tell people that, that to listen, you have to whatever you focus on will ultimately change. This is why I want you to do a monthly budget. This is why I say every three months or once a quarter. Or once every couple of months or once every six months, you need to be doing your net worth statement. Writing it out on a piece of paper, having a tab on your spreadsheet. If you're doing it on an Excel spreadsheet or a Google spreadsheet, having a tab that says net worth. And then our, and net worth uh, April 2025. Net worth April, uh, 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 September 2025. Net worth April 2026. Net worth September. And keeping up, keeping tabs. Because that focus is going to cause you your behavior to change because it's going to be in your brain, in your mind, right? Now, I'm not saying, listen, everything I talk about, literally, in my, in, 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 if you listen closely to what I'm talking about, I'm talking about principles. These are all principles, following certain principles to get financially ahead of 99% of the people on the planet. Not focusing on some of the other stuff, but focusing on doing the principles right. The principle of taking action, the principle of thinking, the principle of focus, the principle of production, the principle of creation, the principle of building. Right? Think about it. When you're focused and intentional with your money, things, things end up changing. And the action steps are a manifestation of that change. Right. So write down your goals. I'm back on goals. Right. Because they're so important. Write down your goals. 
And then when you write down your goals, for each goal, you should have three or four action steps, things that you're going to do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to reach said goal, right? This is how you get ahead. You have a vision, right? You have a big, big plan, a big strategy, a big aim, a big goal. I mean, not goal, but a big uh, vision of where you want to be. And then under that big vision, you have a goal, maybe three goals. Listen, don't be over there. Don't don't start writing down 10 to 20 goals. Too many goals. No, 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 no nothing get done. Three with your personal finances. Two or three goals, three or four goals, specific goals. So vision, goals, action steps under each goal. Sounds elementary. I know it sounds elementary, but I guarantee you 99% of the people on the planet don't do it. 99% of the people on the planet aren't thinking like this, right? They're thinking, oh, I got a money problem. I got to work more hours on the job. No, you don't have to work more hours on the job. You got to work more hours on you, on learning on thinking your way, on your strategy, on producing a strategy that's going to help you build some wealth. Now, that strategy that you produce, it may it may involve you working more than 40 hours a week. It may involve studying. It may involve going back to school. It may involve getting a certification. It may involve doing something to have higher paying skills. That's cool. But then what you're doing is you're working on you. You're, you're working that extra 40, that 10 plus hours a week, you're working that as a part of your strategy to improve your personal finances, right? I hope that makes sense, guys. I hope that makes sense what I'm trying to, what I'm, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Somebody said I had, a, I've had a ton of different jobs too. Yeah, I've had a, I had a bunch of jobs. I put in a lot of different work, right? But it wasn't the work that I put, it wasn't the hours that I put in the work. It was the strategy that I used and I put in the, the strategy I developed in those extra hours. It was the thinking, right? Somebody said, I thought I had worked a lot of jobs, but you definitely had me beat. I finally landed a job with the federal government and retired. Congratulations, Mildred, on your retirement. Congratulations. Let's see. It says somebody said Maddie said it's good to pursue more money, but each one has to conscious be conscious of their stage in life. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Somebody said, Vanessa said, what job did you like the most while building your business? One of my favorite jobs is when I worked at Jiffy Lube, believe it or not. That was one of my favorite jobs. I like getting dirty down in the lower bay and changing oil and all that good stuff. But I always like a job that allows me to um, uh, pursue or be in my gift. Right. Whatever my gift, my talent is. And also, obviously, people around you at the job, the job I have right now, I really enjoy. But my favorite jobs are jobs that allow me to do the things that I do best. Right. Which was talk and help and teach and all that good stuff. So I was a teacher for a while, too. I really enjoyed that coaching, coach a lot of middle school, high school basketball as well. A lot of uh, elementary basketball, too. Um, so let's see here. Mint Mobile's owned by T-Mobile and use their network. Absolutely. You're right. X music. Um, let's see. Any questions? Put a cue, put a cue. Hattiesburg, Mississippi, checking in. Good to have you in Hattiesburg. Guys, hit that like button. Check out also in the description box. I got the 24 Laws of Money free ebook from me to you. It's in the description box. I put it in the description box and it's it tells about my journey. It also gives you 24 principles, principle polls. Right. That's what I'm talking about on this channel is principles to get ahead of most people when it comes to your personal finances. Right. Most people believe it's the work. I got to put in that extra hard work at the job. I need to work 50 hours, 70 hours, 80 hours. But stop and think for a second. As I said earlier, I'll reiterate because it's very important. The people who have the most money in America are not the people who are doing the hardest jobs are not the people who are putting in the hardest work. They are the people who have thought differently than what we've been taught to think, right? See, the things that's going to help you build your wealth are not the things that they teach you in school. Hello, right? They don't teach you 
the things that you're having to learn right now on these YouTube streets and these YouTube channels and, you know, the books that you read, ask yourself a real serious, basic question. Why didn't they teach me this in the fifth grade, in the ninth grade? Why didn't I learn how to invest in the stock market in the sixth grade, in the fourth grade, in the third grade? These are because those are concepts that you could pick up in the fourth and fifth and sixth grade. You can pick up the concept of investing in the eighth grade. Why didn't they teach you how to grow money in the eighth, ninth, tenth grade? There's a reason. Because they have to produce, they don't have to, they don't want to produce creators and builders and producers. They don't, then you, you're not, you're not taught to be that. So you have to rewire and reprogram your brain to think like a creator, developer, producer, and builder. Because you're taught to come in this classroom, sit down, don't say a word. Somebody's in control over you the whole time you're there, depending on where you go to school, right? Right? And yeah, we can do certain projects and so forth, and you can use your creativity here or there. But if we're working on this project, I can't have you working on the pro that project. You're doing what everybody else is doing. You're taught a herd mentality. You are taught a herd mentality. So that when you, everybody in the classroom, in the, in, the, in, in the kindergarten, you line up to go get the water, go to the restroom break. You line up to come back to the classroom because you're expected to stay in line. <laughs> Think about it. And then when you go to seventh grade, eighth grade, you're not lining up anymore. But guess what? You have a set schedule where you go to first hour. Bell rings. You go to second hour. Bell rings. You go to third hour. That reminds me of my job when I worked on UPS, unloading the brown cars. Uh, you unload the brown cars. Bell rings. Everybody stops, goes and sits down at the bench for 15 minutes, takes their break. Everybody's sitting on break. Everybody goes back to work. This is what you're taught in school. You're not, you're taught. And then when you get older, you do what? You go to a job. You clock in at 830. You're allowed to clock out at five o'clock, 435 o'clock, whatever it is. You have to go to lunch between 12 and 1230. Again, you are taught robotically what to think, not how to think, not how to create, not how to develop, not how to build, not how to produce something on your own. And so when you want to get better with money, you're thinking, give me more of the same. I need more hours at the job. I need 10 more hours at the job. 10 more hours of somebody else telling me what to do. 10 more hours of being chained to a job that tells me what to do. Instead of, I'm going to take that, I'm going to take five of those hours and start working on me. What can I produce and create? What can I read and think about? What can I develop? What type of habits? What can I write down to figure out what I can do to change my financial situation as opposed to putting in 20 more hours on the job? See, that's what you're not taught to do. And that's what I'm telling you. You have to reprogram your brain to do to get ahead of 99% of the people on the planet. That's the kicker, right? And you just, you just, you just got to start being different. And you got to start thinking different than most people, right? If you start thinking different, you're going to start acting different. And guess what? The, uh, the outcome of your money is going to be different, right? If you, and, and you got to maybe surround yourself with be different people, right? To feed you something different, right? But you got to take in the new information. You got to learn the new stuff, read the new stuff, absorb the new stuff, analyze the information, and come up with your own thought process. That's a whole part of this creating and building is you have to figure out what do I need to do and think about and implement to be better with my money. After listening to Smart Money Bro, Dave Ramsey, keep naming the people. Boom, boom, boom. Read all the books, J.L. Collins, John Bogle, whatever. Read all the books, take in all the information. Okay, now what's my philosophy about money? Hmm, okay. I agree more with him on this, but I don't agree with him on that. I like what Susie Orman said about this, but I don't really agree with that and so forth. Now you're thinking for you. Now you're able to break the chain of indentured servitude called debt and, and everything else and thinking. You got to break the chains off of your thinking 
in order to get there. Now, if you're raising a young person, you can start thinking them to think like this. You can start teaching them to think like this at a young age. Think for themselves, right? Be a, per be a person that's an independent thinker that thinks for themselves and makes the right decisions that is right for them based on their goals and all that good stuff, right? We can dig in all that, right? Let me go back to the chat. This is how to get ahead of most people in the world when it comes to your personal finances. Somebody said, set the goal, develop a plan to achieve it, take action, be consistent, and you'll most likely achieve it. Thank you, De thanks, Davion, for saying that. 99%, you're just throwing stats out there. Hey, I could have said 80%, 70%. But when I look at the top 1% of the people of the world, the top 1% of the people of the world don't do what everybody else does. Really, the top 10% of people in the world don't do what everybody else does. Listen, if you're in America and you earn $100,000 a year, $150,000 a year, you're in the top 1%, 2% of earners on the planet, okay? So that's one of the reasons I want to use 99% in that title. Vision, goals, action steps under each goal. Absolutely. Vanessa, makes sense. You're making sense. I hope I am, Curtis. Thanks, Curtis. I agree. Saving up for the down that down payment. Not sure what Tracy's talking about. Work, for, work more hours on you, not that. Appreciate that. I definitely do not put all my eggs in one basket. How to use your wealth to help others. Excellent. I'm going to highlight that one. Fin Finland said, how do I use my wealth to help others? One, one, I'm a giver. And I talk about giving all the time on this channel. It's another principle, right? I tell you, hey, when you're writing out your monthly budget, put giving at the top of that budget. For the last 22, 23 years, giving is at the top of every budget I do. And listen, I put I give a tithe or a, a piece to my church, but other but I give other I give in other ways too, right? I'm giving of my time right here on this channel, right? But I give away things as well, and I believe strongly in giving. I don't care how much you give, okay? That that's important to note, okay? If you give a thousand dollars a month, great. If you give thirty dollars a month, great. It's all about your heart when you give. I'm not going to tell you what to give, how much to give. I'm going to tell you to give what's in your heart to give and help other people. So it's a big piece of what I talk about on this channel, Finland. I'm glad you brought that up. But for me personally, it's about giving not only to my church because my church does great work, but also giving and helping other people along the way who need that help. Single mom, homeless, you name it. I always give and help every you know those folks I come in contact. But I'm helping folks right now on this channel. It's one of the way I, ways I help. Uh, because I have a wealth of knowledge about how to build wealth, and I like to give that away, right? Somebody says, writing a monthly budget just before payday is my favorite time of the month. I took clo look closely at my, my pay stub, and all my overtime goes to saving an investment. Fantastic. Congratulations to you, Dan. Looks like you got a plan, and you're working the plan. Never imagined, never would have imagined you turning wrenches. My biggest side hustle I used to buy my house was running a mechanic shop. Yes. And it says 99% of my customers come from my main job, Jack Stan said. Yes, I like uh, turning wrenches. I'm not, uh, I'm not the computer geek guy. Nothing wrong with that, but it's just not me. I'd rather be outside doing something, uh, you know, cutting grass, using my hands and stuff like that. Now, I'm not, I'm not a carpenter, okay? I'm not going to build a house. But I can definitely change some oil, you know, if I have to, change, you know, change whatever, change some brakes, tires, whatever it may be. Uh, let's see. Remind these people that they have a lot of options. Don't get all these side hustles at least to them taking pills, high blood pressure. Check the logic. Great point. Let me highlight that. Great point. Remind some of these people that they have a lot of options. You do have options, right? You don't want to get all these different side hustles. And I agree with what this person said. Uh, and, and it leads to you uh, being bummed out and stressed out. But you, if, if you got to put a little extra work in your, into yourself, that's okay. I don't mind you doing that. But yes, be careful. Balance is always important. Thanks for saying that. Check the logic. Uh, my first job in high school was working at Walt Disney back in 83. Fantastic. Changed my money mindset. Noted, Curtis. The education system in America produces workers. Absolutely, Jay Samuels. Jay Samuels, you better believe it. It produces workers. It doesn't produce entrepreneurs necessarily. That's not the goal of the educate the public education system in America. It's not the goal of the education system in general. The goal is to produce people who don't think, go to work, come home, go to work, come home, go to work, come home. That's why you got to change. If you want to change your money, you got to change it the way you're thinking about that, the way you're looking at that, right? Let's see here. Uh, wealth building is usually taught in wealth building families, and then wealth is inherited and forwarded. 
Not all wealth is inherited, guys. You'd be surprised. The largest, I think the Ramsey Solution did the largest um, uh, uh, survey of millionaires, 10,000 millionaires in America, in America, and they found that close to 80%, 75, 80%, um, they were first generation. Now, don't get me wrong. They might have had some some, uh, uh, some type of, he said, he in the survey, they said close to 80% inherited nothing. So if you take that on the fa on face value of what it says, without going deep into where they you know got their survey participants and all that, what how the question was worded and all that, without going into all that, that tells us that a lot of folks did not inherit a bunch of money, guys. Don't believe when you start believing that wealth people that build wealth they got it from somewhere. It's all that's going to do is deter you from trying to build wealth, right? But I am a living example of a person that built wealth without family background wealth, okay? Had zero. Both of my parents didn't graduate high school. My mom went back later and got her uh, GED, and then she went and got an associate's degree and became an RN for the last 50 years. But my parents, I didn't come from that type of family. I didn't have an uncle who dropped me $20,000. I didn't have a grandparent that left me anything, okay? And I know a lot of people that are in that same situation. Families didn't leave them anything, but they made some smart decisions. They strategized themselves out of poverty. They planned and worked the plan to get out of poverty, okay? So it's not just about people that, uh, that inherit, uh, it's not just about people that inherit money. Let's not believe that, guys, because that's going to, if we believe that, it's going to deter a lot of us, right? Let's see here. Charlene said, uh, that's a good point, Charlene, about just because you're on disability, you can still save for your future. Uh, let's see here. I agree. Some people were not interested, so they missed. Absolutely. Wasn't was on another Zoom. Good morning. Good morning, Jennifer. How you doing? Good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Feel free afterwards to rewind this to the beginning and check it out. The school taught us how to research the things we we're inter interested in at the library. Many were not interested. Change your community. Brooklyn, New York in the house. Thank you for dropping real talk. You're welcome. Right. I appreciate that. You said you're a great source of financial awakening. I finally understand that I need to take action seriously. Absolutely. Take that action seriously. Nobody's going to help you. There's, you know, nobody's going to help you. You got to help yourself. Big, big, big point of all this thing is you have to be the person that pulls yourself up out of poverty or pulls your, yourself up out of paycheck to paycheck. Listen, if you're making $100,000 a year, you should not be living paycheck to paycheck. I don't believe that. I know there's lots of, you can, we can pull up any stories out there that say people that are making $100,000 a year feel like they're living paycheck to paycheck. Well, listen, you should not feel like that. That means you're doing, you're doing something wrong. Okay. I know the system is out there. The system is high inflation, high rent, everything's high, but what you got to change. Humans adapt. So we have to adapt. Okay. Yeah. There's stuff out there that we can't help. Rent is $1,500, $2,000. What can I do differently? Starts here. Starts here. Marius, Romania in the house. Good to have you here. Uh, let's see here. Giving is important. Right, Curtis. Follow the, follow the route that takes you where you want to go. Junior Achievement has a program. Thanks for bringing, putting that in the chat, Maria. Appreciate you putting that in the chat right there. Uh, health more important than money any day of the week. Health is really important. Really a big piece of this whole thing. Let's see here. Somebody said Biden forgave $132,000 of student loan for me in 2022. Fantastic. Congratulations, Jacqueline. Now, Jacqueline, the key is the behaviors that led to you getting the $132,000 student loan, student loans, and have you changed that, right? Because now, okay, you don't want to go into $100,000 of credit card debt, right? Make sure you don't have those same behaviors. Make sure you use it to your benefit and you move forward. But congratulations to you, Jacqueline. Let's see here. Number one goal is to eliminate debt. Extra side hustles and goals without debt freedom is not good. I want to get the good get the get the book about the U.S. Millionaire Survey. It's called The Millionaire Next Door. The Millionaire Next Door is the old one, but Ramsey Solution did a most uh, a recent one. Let me let me hang on this this, this comment that Joseph made. It said number one goal is to eliminate debt. Eliminate debt. Extra side hustles and goals without debt freedom is not good. Let me impress upon you guys something, okay? If you if one of the things I like to I like to talk about on this channel is uh, uh, building higher paying skills. OK, so one of the ways that you can not have to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week 
or more more hours, think that you have to work more hours, is maybe strategize a way to get higher paying skills so that you can utilize those higher paying skills to work 40 hours a week, as opposed to staying on your job, working 40 hours, and then saying, I'm going to work a side hustle, side gig to work 70 hours. Instead of doing that, why not strategize a way so that in seven, in, in three to five years from now, you can be working one place, whether it's a job or a business or whatever, and you can make more money because now you have a higher paying skill and you can work long. You can work. You can make more money on less hours of work. This is part of strategizing and saying not just how I can bring in more income and make more money and I'm sorry, have, make more money in more hours of work. Say, how can I cut down the hours and, and raise the income? Start thinking about how you can cut the hours and raise the income. What skills will it take for you to do that? Right? I'm trying to get you to understand how to create a plan. Plan so that you can work 38 hours a week and make twice as much as you make right now today working that same working that job and the side hustle. Okay, you work, you make $50,000 a year on your job, $20,000 a year on your side hustle, that's $70,000 a year. How can you increase your skills so that you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year making make only on 40 hours a week that's what i'm talking about about thinking your thinking yourself through the process it's not just side gig side hustle side gig side hustle to make more money right but where how can you produce and create something in terms of higher skills so you don't have to put in 80 hours 70 hours a week you can put in the 40, making $100,000 a year, and you can put in five extra hours a week working on yourself, building yourself, learning your income, your whatever, right? But strategy, right? Let's see. Somebody said, uh, good book. I learned a lot. John Rockefeller founded a general board, elect, education board. Once said, I don't want a nation of thinkers. I want a nation of workers. Hello. Great point about John Rockefeller. He wants a nation of workers because he's using the workers so to make himself wealthy. So his point is to use you as a worker, right? Let's see. We got people running for office that want the working age to literally go up into the average death age. Yeah, because they want uh, to, in, to have more uh, money in the coffers for things like Social Security. Good point, Will. Uh, let's see here. I want to work easy and when, when I want to work and when I want to invest. Yes, the thing you got to do, I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Jacqueline. You got to create a way to give yourself choices, right? You got, and so this is what I was talking about earlier. I said, you have to get a higher paying skill or higher paying skills. When you get higher paying skills, it gives you choices. It gives you options, right? Um, if you say to yourself, hey, I just want to go to work and come home and work my job at UPS. We're talking about UPS. I just want to work at UPS and come home. Guess what? If that's what you want to do, your options will be limited. Because that's all you have the skills for. But if you increase your skills, it gives you more options and more options gives you freedom. This is why you want to work on getting ahead of 99% of the people in the world. 99% of the people in the world think they are locked into an indentured servitude of having to work to pay, for, to pay to live. Having to work to pay to live. Having to work to pay to live. When you have to work to pay to live or to work to pay off the car or to work to pay off the house or to work, when you have to do that, you are an indentured servant. And your choices are few. The whole point of all this money thing is to be free, to have some financial freedom. Financial, fr how do you get financial freedom? Because financial freedom is getting ahead of 99% of the people on the planet, right? How do you get financial freedom? Change the way you think, new information, right? Right, your thoughts, begin to be a builder, a creator, a doer, a developer, develop something. B build strategies, build strategies as your blueprint to get out of wealth, create strategies, create spreadsheets, create processes, create habits, and then do the stuff. Don't just create it, but do it. Be a doer, be disciplined, be consistent, develop goals, develop action steps, and then do the action steps. Hold yourself accountable, hold yourself responsible. That's how you do it, right? And I'm going to go back to the chat. Somebody said my ex-best friend, boom, boom. 
Always had nice things. Talked about having money a lot. She would boast when she bought expensive things. In hindsight, she was faking. Okay, good, good point. Chris Hogan's book, Everyday Millionaires. That's a pretty good one, too. He's associated with Dave Ramsey at the time. Absolutely. Uh, don't fake wealth. It doesn't achieve anything. My goal is if you have a question, put a Q in there, guys. I'm just reading comments, but I'd love to answer some questions. Uh, good afternoon, Smart Money Bro. Alvira, good to have you here. On the job, client just went off to sleep. You must be working a, a home health care or something there. But good to have you here. Thank you for showing up. Somebody said, I take pieces from Dave Ramsey and Robert Kiyosaki, and I, uh, I believe good debt is okay, but I also believe I should be live below my name. to say. Excellent point. Good point, Davion. I read that fast. I'm sorry. Uh, this is, let me hone in on this one. Fish stick said, I want to achieve this, but I feel like I'm behind with starting over at 40 years old. Listen to me closely, fish sticks. You're not behind. You're not behind 40 years old. Look, you've got another 20 years before you can, I say before you, before you may want to retire, right? You may want to work until you're 70, 80. It doesn't matter if you do or don't. It's okay if you don't, if you do, but you, you listen, I always like, I always liken, uh, life zero to 80 in quarters, zero to 20, first quarter of your life. You're just trying to learn, get things right. 20 to 40, you're in quarter two, 40 is halftime, 40 is halftime, right? Come back from halftime at say about what, 45 years old, you're back from halftime, right? You're in the third quarter, right? So fish sticks, you're 40 years old. You're about to enter the third quarter. The game is four quarters long. The game of life is four quarters long for most people, not for everybody. Right. Some people lose their the, the, their life in their in the first quarter. Some people lose it in the second quarter before halftime even gets here. But when you're 40, you're only at halftime. You got a whole big life waiting on you and you can change things around. I started to change my life with my money at the age of 30, but I didn't really kick in until after age 40. See. When I started Smart Money Bro in 2017, 2018, my, my net worth was probably $250,000. And I was 47. So between 40 and 47, I kept, I kept dollar cost averaging into the market, kept managing my rental property, kept dollar cost averaging into the market. And the funny thing about money is when you get over $100,000, over $200,000, that thing compounds quickly. Right. If we spend the year of 2020, 2024, 2025, we spend one of those years at uh, an S&P that's over 15 percent. My investments, my investments in the market are going to make one hundred thousand dollars or more. Just in one year. Because, you know, when you have more money, the compounding effect gets ridiculous. Trust me. So fish sticks, you're not too old. I started this YouTube channel when I was 51. You're not too old, right? Smart money, bro, at 47. Start doing one-on-ones to help people with their personal finances at 49 or 50. You're not too old. Change your way of thinking. You can get it done after 40 with no problem. But you got to believe. You got to believe in yourself, right? Stop feeling you're behind and feeling that you get energized. Get it rolling. I'm here to walk with you, fish sticks. Uh, Queens, New York, Alvira said, good to have you. Norway is here. Woo, long way from here. Quebec is in the house. French, uh, French Quebec or just Quebec? Let's see. Uh, without bad debt, we have options. Absolutely. Get rid of the debt first. That's one of the keys to building a strong financial foundation. Get rid of the debt. The, the debt. Uh, let's see. Leo said, fish sticks, I'm starting over too. It happens. Exactly. Let's see. Somebody else. Maria said, I just started my own financial practice over the age of 50. It's never too late. Maria, thanks for that encouraging word for fish sticks. I appreciate you guys encouraging that person. That's what I like to do. And that's really what I like to see in this chat. People helping people. Right. People in the chat that join me, man, I got some great folks on here in this community. I really appreciate you guys for helping other people out and keeping the chat positive. Right. Every now and then we get a knucklehead or somebody that wants to be. But it's got to be about positivity, man. We're trying to help people. Somebody said, how do you get one-on-one -on -one mentorship? In the description box of this YouTube video, there's a link to my one-on-one -on -one coaching and to my schedule. And if you go to click the link to the one-on-one -on -one coaching, it'll it, the schedule will be that, there for you to fill out. Right? Even if you just want to do, I offer, hey, if you want to do a 30-minute ask me any question you want to ask, I can I can help you out with that. It's on my schedule. 
If you want to join the channel as an advanced member, $24.99 per month, $24 per month, I'll have a 20, 20, 25 minute conversation with you once a month. You just get on the schedule, right? If you're an advanced member of the channel, if you want to do a full blown hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes where we share screens, I go through your budget one on one. Click on that link in the description box. I don't mind helping you out. Somebody said, I, I like that mentality. Four quarters. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a basketball player. Uh, so if you're a baseball player, Will G said, I'm a base, I'm a previous baseball player. So I started to think of it as innings one through nine, 10 years being, being, I like that. That's a good analogy as well. Right. So think about it. If you use that analogy of life being nine innings till 90 years old, then hey, um, 40, you're in the fourth inning. Fourth inning is pretty early. <laughs> right. Or maybe you use the analogy that I use, which is quarters. I like to say it through 80 years old, but you know, hey, it's it's early. You gotta the way you think is gonna dictate the way you behave. You think you're old, you're gonna start acting old, you're gonna start getting older, right? Uh Sache said, uh, from B more, good to have you here. Not too old. Teach the people. Ruth Mack, absolutely. Thanks for joining me, Ruth Mack. I hadn't shot shouted you out. So big shout out to you, Ruth Mack. But yeah, not too old. Stop it. Get out of here with that, right? I'm gonna give you energy. When you come over here and I'm a, I'm a, I'm an energy guy, right? Um, let's see. Somebody said Charlie Munger mentioned that the first 100 K invested is the hardest point of investing. Charlie is a hundred percent, right? When your investments get, when you have $500,000 in the stock market, you now the kicker is when things go bad, they go bad. But well, when things go good, they go good, real good. Right. Uh, let's see here. Love the motivation. Started back investing. I'm 39. Lakia, you young. You can you can do it. If you if I if I could start if I could start at age of 39, you know what I would do, Lakia? If I was 39 years old, I would just do as much sacrificing as I could. Yeah, I would have fun. Let me just say this too. I would have a little fun with my money, right? I would have a little fun. I always talk about this rule called the 3% rule because I don't want you guys to think that you got to hustle, 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 and you got to spend your life hustle, 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 and you can't relax and enjoy and, and enjoy life and, and smell the roses. You can and you should, right? The rule I always tell people is 3% of your take home, whatever that may be. If you bring home $1,000 a week, then you need to take $30 out and do something for yourself. That's, that's, that's my opinion. Right. If you make if you bring home two thousand dollars every two weeks, take 60 bucks of that budget in 60 bucks. Put it on your budget. I don't care what you call it. Miscellaneous me, whatever. But take 60 bucks. That's three percent of two thousand dollars. I'm talking about your take home here. Three percent of your take home. Do something inexpensive for yourself. Right. If, if you make $4,000 a month, you bring home $4,000, what is that? That's going to be $120. That's about 3%. $120. Take $120 out of your budget. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you just go to a nice restaurant. I don't care if you spread it around and, and you spread it out for four weeks and you get a, a Starbucks coffee once a week. Treat yourself. I don't care what you do with it. This way, if you budget that into your budget, this way, you feel a sense that you're getting something out of your money, even though you're grinding, right? So I, I want to, I just, I like to say that because people think that you talk about money so much and you think that we're supposed to just work 90 hours a week and not live. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you to, first of all, in this video, I'm telling you specifically, spend time thinking hard as opposed to working hard. But I'm also telling you also, it's okay to spend a little bit of your money on you doing something that's inexpensive, self-care, because I strongly believe that the best things in life are free and outside. The best things in life are not sitting in, in, in on a beach in Aruba, right? The best things in life are free and outside. You go outside on a 60-degree 60, a 60 day, 65-degree day, and you just take and you walk through a trail with trees and grass and insects and squirrels and go sit by the river. Listen, the best things in life are free and outside. But look, I don't mind you taking, if you bring home $4,000 a month, take $120 a month and do something for yourself, but make sure you budget that in your zero-based budget, okay? So I hope that, I hope that uh, helps you out a little bit. Somebody said, uh, how much should a starter emergency fund? I'm a $2,000 person for a starter emergency fund. 
right? And I know what Dave Ramsey says. He says, oh, use a thousand. No, this is 2024, 2025, 2026. You need a th you need $2,000, maybe even $2,500 because I want you to have enough. Forget about everything else. You got to have enough. If you have a paid for truck sitting in the driveway and all four tires go out, go out for some odd, strange reason, right? You got to replace all four tires. If you got $2,000, you got enough. If you got a thousand, you may not have enough in today's age with today's inflation. Let's just, let's keep it a buck as, as the, the young people say, right? Keep it, keep it, keep it real. That's my opinion. $2,000 to $2,500 before you start attacking your debt. That's my opinion. Uh, life and legacy, 44. So fish sticks, we're all starting over, right? Ruth said, halftime is the best time. Yes, halftime is the time when you can recollect your thoughts. And guess what the best coaches do at halftime? The absolute best coaches on the planet of any sport. Guess what they do at halftime? They make adjustments. You can be the best uh, coach in the world, right? Coming up with a game plan. Yeah, we got them. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But guess what? If you can't make adjustments, you're not going to be a good coach. And the whole point of this whole discussion and, and, and talk that we talk about on this channel is that you've got to be your best coach. You've got to be your best coach. And the way you're your best coach is you need to stop, breathe, take a second and figure out what's my strategy. What's my plan for the second half of my life? What's my plan for the second half of my personal finances? Even when you're doing a budget, I tell you to visit your budget at least three times a month. Don't just do a budget, put it to the side. You visit the budget midway through the month. So you can take stock, make some changes, do some rearranging, uh, assess a few things, and then go out and hit it on the next pay period, next two-week pay period. Make sure you do it differently. So halftime is the best time. Ruth, thanks so much for pointing that out in the chat. I appreciated that. Uh, let's see here. Somebody said, what's the fastest way to get a high grade as a federal government employee? Um, Charles, the best way to get a high grade as a federal government employee is this. I started out as a GS-7 with the federal government, right? Now I'm a GS-13, way up the steps. I don't mind sharing because I don't care that you know, right? All my jobs, all my life since the, since 2020, 20, since 2002, my jobs, my main jobs have, no, since 1994, my main jobs have always been public. So I don't mind you knowing that. I'm, I'm way up there now. But the point is this, the way you get a, uh, let me put that up there on the screen. Since somebody knew I work for the federal government, here's a couple of things. Be, be good at what you do, all right? Don't be incompetent. Be good at what you do. If you want to move up at any job, federal government, not federal government, personal, whatever, be good at what you do, right? When you're good at what you do, you have you you open up the opportunities. You open up the choices. Um, I'm not saying everybody that's high up is good at what they do. I'm not saying that. I'm saying for you personally, just make it a point and a commitment to be good at what you do, right? And of course, you don't want to make it. You don't want to make any waves. You want to do your job, do your job well. That's the biggest. That's the biggest tip I can give you, Charles, on how to move up. But the other thing I want to tell you is you also got to keep applying for jobs. You can't get stuck and comfortable when you work for the federal government. I guarantee you, when you anybody in here that works for the federal government, you know that it's easy to get comfortable where you are. Oh, man, you know, I got this perk. I can come and go. I do. Don't get comfortable. When you get comfortable on any job, you end up getting to the point where your skills have, be, have progressed beyond your pay. So I like to tell people every six months, you should be revamping your resume. If you're looking, if hey, listen, if you're looking to get, move up in a job and you want a job, I'm a, I'm not a person that is against jobs. Okay, I'm not that guy that says jobs are no good. Get out of a job. No, I think if you want a job, it's okay. But if you do that, you got to know how to get the most out of your job too, right? So if you you know just be good at what you do and always shop around your skills because your skills could be paying more than what you have at that current job. A lot of people get too comfortable. Five years later, they're still on the job, not making what they want to make. But the what they do is paid more at another job or private or, or private sector as opposed to the federal government. So just shop around if you're in that mode of getting more from your job and you work for the federal government. And you got to become a regular on USA Jobs, meaning you got to know USA Jobs. That's the website where you apply for American federal government jobs, right? That's one of the main websites. 
So that's what I would do. I hope that helped you out, Charles. Do you recommend fix and flip or having renters with real estate? Real estate. There's three different big ways to make real estate. Wholesale, flip, buy and hold. I'm a buy and hold person. The real estate I have, I've had it for a long, long time, right? D decades. Fix and flip is cool, but fix and flip, flip, fix and flip requires some things that a lot of new people in real estate don't have. One of the most important things that fix and flips require is it requires a keen eye to actually evaluate a property and then price the, the repairs, right? You have to know most new people, when they get into doing a real, doing a fix and flip, haven't ever done one, they miscalculate everything. And that miscalculation causes you to lo lose money when you're talking about real estate. So fix and flip is cool, but it's, it's fast money now. I say fast money. It's two, three months, five months, six months down the road. And there's also things that are unpredictable that are happening in the fix and flip world. You can't predict what's going to happen to the market. You thought that property was going to sell for $300,000. But guess what? In the six months or nine months that it took you to rehab it, that property is now going to sell for two thirty. dollars you, you did all your calculations thinking $300,000, but it's really two two thirty. dollars Instead of making $50,000, you make $17,000 and you're mad at, flip, flip and flip and, at fix and flips. So fix and flip is cool, but you just got to, I don't, I don't recommend fix and flips to start. But if you want to start that way, I'm not mad at you and you can make some money doing it. All right. So there's nothing wrong with that. Hope that helped answer your question. Uh, Alexis, first time catching my live. I'm dropping jewels. Thank you, Alexis. I appreciate you more than you know. Smart fun. Iron sharpens iron on this channel. Maria, love that you said that. What verse is that? Iron sharpens iron. Absolutely. I love that verse. Uh, started at 45, 15 years ago and looking good now. Harris, congratulations to you, Harris, uh, for actually changing your personal financial situation. I spend 3% on Xbox. Nothing wrong with that. You got to do what you got to do. If that's what you enjoy doing, I'm all for that. I realize on this channel, guys, that personal finance is personal. And a lot of what I say can go across the board, but there's a lot of things I say that aren't across the board. Depends on your personal situation, where you live, what your, you know, what your, your career is. It depends on uh, what your risk tolerance level is. There's all different types of things that affect people. Totally understand it. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Somebody said running out of money. It's back to overthinking. So true. Let's see. And I'm catching up here, guys. I'm currently a GS 13. Want to get to a 15. Charles said, Charles, if you're a 13 and want to get to a 15, ask yourself why, right? Ask yourself, why do you want to get to a 15? Then ask yourself, are you willing to take on supervisory roles? If you're willing to take on supervisory roles, and you want to get to a get to a 15 and you're a 13. Now ask yourself, are you mobile? Can you move around? You live in San Francisco, but can you move to Denver? You live in Denver, but can you move to Florida? Can you move to Huntsville, Alabama? Ask yourself, can you be mobile? Because to be a 15, oftentimes you, you may have to be mobile. Can you move to another agency? Right. Um, who do you know? Who likes you? Right. All those things come into play when you're talking about going from a 13 to a 15. Right. And then ask yourself, is it something you really want? So a lot of things to think about, Charles. Charles, you need to we need to do a one on one, man. I can I can run through a bunch of stuff with you. Hey, Miss V. Good to have you here as always. Appreciate you being here. Let's see. I think I need to get a consultation with you. Uh, we are in the same group. I'm in the green badge government through cybersecurity system admin. Fantastic. Yeah, Will, I'm more than happy to help you out, man. You're welcome, De Davion. Appreciate you being here. Uh, yes, check the logic. Thanks for giving giving out some type of uh, motivation for, for uh, Charles. Proverbs 2717. Thank you, Curtis. This is what it's all about. It's all about getting ahead of 99% of everybody with your personal finances. PJ said, please explain how the federal government still has a pension versus, versus private section. So if, you, if a private pays more, it pays. Ask that question a different way. I'm not sure I'm understanding exactly what you're talking about. Uh, federal government still has a small pension. Yes. Please explain how the federal government still has a pension versus, versus I guess you're saying private, private sector. So if private pays more, it may not after your, you factor in the pension. Uh, that's a good point. That's true. Ask that question in a different way, PJ. I'll try to answer it. How to get ahead of finance, financially of 99% of people. That's really what this channel is all about. 
is taking you to another level with the way you think about money, another level with the way you perceive and manage money. Not the not the way you were thought, think the way you were taught. Right. Not how you were taught, because how we were taught were to be worker bees. But I'm saying we have to be producers, creators and builders. We got to have goals and we got to have action steps underneath each, each one of those specific goals. And the goal should be specific. Right. I want to have more money by this time next year. That ain't specific. I want to have an emergency fund that has fifteen thousand dollars in it by November 1st. That's specific. That's a goal. OK, so we got to be specific with those. And you got to get out of this mind frame of thinking it's about hard work. I got to work 80 hours. I got to work 70 hours. You're not working. No, the hardest workers in America make the least money in America. Think about that. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. The hardest workers in America make the least money in America. The smartest workers in America make the most money in America. It's the, the, the best strategizers in America, the best creators and planners in America make the most money in America. Not the 85 hours a week at your job or the 75 hours a week at your job, but the 40 hours a week at your job, 45, 50 hours a week, but then the planning, the strategy, the goal setting, the visions, you know, the actual implementation, the action steps, the behaviors. The people that can strategize and plan their way out of poverty are the people that make the most money in America. Let's see. Somebody said, uh, smart, bro, I work as a certified home health. Yeah, I figured that. You float around. Yeah, I know about that. My mom used to do that as an, as an RN. Uh, federal and state jobs have pensions. Yes, they do have pensions, right? Somebody said, currently GS7 started out as a four. Hey, I started out as a GS7 too. I just bought my military time back. Total of 20 years, and I'm 41. 41? <laughs> you got a long time to go. You can retire from two different careers if you want, or you can build a business on the side if you want. And I'm betting on myself the next 16 years, I work USA jobs like a part-time job. VM, I love that. Work it like a part-time job, and you'll find yourself moving up. Be careful about you know taking on jobs that you don't like. Always be careful about that. But hey, it becomes a numbers game once you get in, 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 in there and you have things you want to do and accomplish in terms of moving up the GS level. Oh, somebody said SMART goals. Yeah, somebody told me that before. I don't know what SMART goals are, but SMART goals stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time Bound. That's cool. That's SMART. Uh, Kevin O, good to have you here, Kevin O. Haven't shouted you out, thought I shot you out. We got a great community here. Listen, guys, I'm not going to hold you. We've been on a long time. It's a beautiful Saturday. Remember I talked about getting outside and walking? I'm going to get outside and walking. I may cut the grass. I don't know. Uh, no, I probably won't cut the grass to tomorrow or, or Monday, but I'm trying to let it grow a little bit. But, man, people around me, man, they, they cut their grass a lot. So I want to cut mine, too, but I might wait a minute, just let it grow a little bit. But the key is this, guys. I'm here to help you. I want you guys to win with money, and I don't want you to be like everybody else with money. I want you to purpose in your heart and be committed to learning and doing things different than most people. Because when you can get it, when you get, get to the point where you can do things different with your money and you're confident enough and you feel okay about that, that's when you that's when things start taking off for you. Because the majority of people are broke. The majority of people are just, how do I get more income? How do I get more income? How do I get more income? And they're not, and they're not using their brain to think about it. And that's what I want you guys to really think about doing is using your brain to say, I'm going to think harder, plan harder, put some steps together, and that's what's going to get me to the next level with my personal finances, right? I appreciate you guys being here. I'm not going to hold you any longer. Thank you so much for the chat section. Thank you so much for all of the great information you guys put in the chat to help out other people. I appreciate you guys motivating others, encouraging others and inspiring the other people that are here in the chat because everybody wants to learn. Jack Stan, yes, I got three adult children. Um, what do I think is the best way to set them up for the future? Let me, let me tell you this, Jack Stan, before I get, up, get off here. Jack Stan, you can, you, can, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You can give all the information you can to human beings, not just your own children, but everybody. You can give all the information to your children, to your cousins, to your niece, to your aunt, to the young people. 
how do the the way the way I try to set my children up is by talking to them and being an example. But guess what? They make their own decisions when they get older. Ain't nothing you can do about it, right? If they want, if you say I don't do debt, but they go out and take out loans to get this and loans to get that, or run up credit card debt. Not that my children have done that because they haven't. They they're pretty responsible. But for most of you out here who have children, you can teach them. Start at a young age, right? Uh, the the importance of giving, the importance of saving, the importance of investing. You can do all that, and that's what you should do. Do the best you can. This is what I, I don't, I'm, I'm the type of person that I don't, I don't criticize parents too often. I really don't. I don't criticize parents too often. Even though I was a teacher, I saw a lot of crazy stuff with parents. I don't criticize parents too often because guess what? When a person gets 13, 14, 15, 18, 25, 28, 33, 38, they're going to do what they want to do. And that's no reflection on the parent. I don't believe in blaming parents for grown people's poor decisions. That's a habit we have in our society, and it's not right because grown people make their own financial decisions. You can you can do everything you can do. I know some really wonderful parents who have children that made bad decisions. I don't blame those parents. I, you can't do that. That's that's not what I think is 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 something that's a smart move to do. We have to understand that people should be held personal personally responsible and accountable for their own actions. So if you're 25 years old in here watching this, you better not blame your parents for what you're doing with money. If you're 35 in, in here, you better not be blaming your parents for what you know or don't know with money. What you have, don't look back and say, my, my mother never taught me about money. My father never taught. You're grown. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? When you get grown, you are personally responsible for what you do or what you don't do. See, because I believe in teaching and talking about personal accountability and personal responsibility. And I, and, and I can't hold you personal, res, res, personally responsible if we want to look back and blame how you were raised or what you were taught or not taught. Right. And if I gave you my full story, <laughs> the full background, you would realize that I'm a living, uh, 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 I'm a living, real breathing, living person that has seen a lot. A whole lot, right? I, I picked it up from the bottom, the bottom, bottom. So that's what I expect you to do. And therefore, I can't be blaming parents. You got to do what you teach your children, what the best way you know how to teach your children about finances and about life. And then they got to go do something with it. And if they don't do nothing with it, it's not on you as a parent, right? Because every parent, no, no parent is perfect. Every parent, I don't care if you live in, you know, Beaver Cleaver and Wally Cleaver, you know, June and 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 uh and the father that I forgot his name, but you know, they made mistakes too. So we all make mistakes. You do the best you can with your children and you teach them the best way you know how. I appreciate you guys being here so much. Hit that like button for me on the way out. Don't forget to smash it, share the link. Great information. I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I got a special one. I'm, I might jump back on here tomorrow as well. Appreciate you more than you know. The best person who's going to take care of the old you is the young you. Guys, take good care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.